out everyone, it's Jacqueline here from Another Boy Tech. Hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about the best back to school laptops. All right, so it sucks, but it is that time of year again, unfortunately. Uh, but today I'm gonna break down the best laptops that you can buy if you're a student. And I'm a student myself, so I know that a lot of students don't have a ton of money to spend on laptops. So I tried to pick some more affordable options and then some more premium options in this video. So we have laptops ranging from like $400 to um, $1,100 or $1,200. If that's still too expensive for you, which is understandable, I would probably recommend going for a Chromebook or something like that. You can't really get an amazing Windows laptop for under the $400 price tag. You're probably gonna have a lot of trackpad issues and other issues like that, whereas a Chromebook will be okay. Uh, the second thing that you're probably noticing is that all these computers are Windows-based. We don't have any Macs here. Uh, and I did that for a reason, but if you are a Mac user, I would probably recommend the 12-inch MacBook or the 13-inch MacBook Pro with no touch bar. Those are really premium options, so I didn't want to include them in this video, but if you can afford them, they both have great experiences. And I did actually do a full video on the 12-inch MacBook, so I'll leave that in the description if you want to check it out. But the four laptops that we're looking at today are the following. The Acer 14-inch Spin 3, the Surface Go, um, the Surface Pro, and then the Dell XPS 13. So I'm going to start it off with our cheapest option, which is the new uh, Microsoft Surface Go. Now, the Surface Go is $400, but that's kind of an advertised price, and that's not really what you're actually going to get, because once you pick up the keyboard, which you kind of need to make this a good laptop, uh, this is $129, and then to get decent specs, you're going to want to buy the mid-tier $550 model. So when all is said and done, you're probably looking at $600 to $700. And that's still cheap, but it's definitely not the marketed price of 400 Even still, though, I think it's a really good deal, and let me tell you why. I'm going to break it down into the pros and the cons of each computer so you can kind of evaluate if it's worth it for you. So starting with the pros, it is a Surface laptop, and that means that it's going to get that same premium build that all the Surface laptops have. It's going to have that Microsoft brand name, and Microsoft, you always pay a premium, which is why this is more expensive, but it's going to have the Microsoft brand name. It's really portable and lightweight. It's a 10-inch screen. It feels premium with the metal and stuff, but if you throw this in your bag, you won't even really notice that it's there, which is a big benefit because a lot of times backpacks are really heavy, you want something portable. So I feel like that's a huge benefit of this. Also, for the cheaper price, a lot of the laptops that are Windows laptops don't have amazing screens at that price. The Surface Go really surprised me. The screen gets very bright in terms of colors, it's there, it's sharp, it's a really, really nice looking panel. It's definitely better than the Acer, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which is kind of similar price, but the screen is really good. It's also a touch screen and it also works with the Surface Pen. So that means that if you're a student that likes to take handwritten notes and also take notes, like by typing them, you're gonna get the best of both worlds here. So you're gonna be able to um, use this to take notes, draw, I have no artistic ability really, uh, but I was able to take some notes on it. And then that just goes right on the side of the computer. It's magnetic, and that's another benefit. It has a magnetic charger, which isn't a huge deal, but it's those little things that kind of make the experience worthwhile. It also has decent speakers and a really nice unboxing experience. Um, some of the other laptops on this list did not, but Surface laptops always have a really good unboxing experience. So those are the pros of the computer. In terms of the cons, there are definitely a couple. So the first thing is that there's a giant lack of ports. You're getting the headphone jack, and you're getting a USB Type-C port and the Microsoft Charge port, but that's it. So, you're gonna need a USB Type-C adapter. You might be lacking ports sometimes. That's definitely something that's not ideal about the computer. For a student, I often find myself having to plug in like a flash drive or something. Not like all the time, but it happens often enough that this could be kind of a downfall. Just know that you're gonna need to add another expense of a USB Type-C dongle. Another con of the computer is that out of the box, it comes with Windows 10S, which is kind of a watered down version of Windows 10 Pro. It means that you can't like download apps that aren't on the Microsoft App Store. So just keep that in mind as well. I'm um, gonna already mentioned that you need to buy the keyboard cover, so that also adds up. And then the other thing that I would kind of say is that there are big bezels on the screen. When you're using the computer, you don't really notice how big the bezels are, but some people commented on that, so I feel like I should address it. And then the other thing is that it is a 10 inch screen, so it's not that amazing for like split screen view. In terms of actually using it, it is a tablet laptop combination. And when you have that, you often don't get amazing of both, right? So it actually does a pretty good job. You won't be able to use this really on your lap that comfortably. I feel like the hinge digs in a little bit, but there are a bunch of different angles that you can use the Surface laptop at, and it's really convenient. So overall, yeah, there are some cons with it, but it's a really solid laptop. And I find myself recommending this to a lot of students 
that want a good laptop, but also a portable laptop. All right, the next laptop is the Acer 14-inch Spin 3. This is $599. So in terms of specs on here, you do get a pretty decent list. The Surface Go did not have amazing specs. It worked though, it was well optimized. But on the Acer 14-inch Spin 3, you're getting 1.6 gigahertz Core i5 dual core processor. It's not the best, but it does work. Eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. So it's not an SSD, but it is a hard drive, which means you're gonna have a lot of space to store documents and stuff. It's not the fastest, but it does work. You're also getting a 14 inch screen, which is good and bad. It's good because it's really big and it's good for uh, split screening. So if you have your textbook on one side um, and your notes on the other, it works. But it's not that great because it adds a lot of heft and weight to this. And you're definitely gonna fill this in your bag. So that leads me to the pros and the cons. The pros is that it has a really good bang for your buck. You're spending 600 bucks, so you're getting a pretty decent build, good specs, and um, pretty overall good experience. You're also getting one terabyte of storage, the large display, which I already mentioned. It is 1080p, so it's not the best, but it's also not terrible. From normal viewing distances, it looks fine. It doesn't look like the sharpest display, but it looks fine for Netflix and everything YouTube, it'll be fine. You get a really good keyboard, it's pretty spacious, um, and there's a lot of travel and stuff. You also get pretty good performance for uh, light, things that you want to do on the computer. You won't be able to edit a video on here um, really that smoothly, but for web browsing, typing up documents, word processing, this is your computer, it will do really well. And also it has a flexible foldable design. So you can take it and you can flip around the screen and then you can use it as a tablet. It's kind of heavy as a tablet. Like I don't really, I don't feel like I could hold this for a long time, but it is nice that you do have that added feature and you can take notes and stuff like that. It also is a touch display. Um, all of these computers actually do have touch panels, so those are the pros. Let's get into some of the cons. All right, so going into some of the cons, I've already mentioned that it's heavy and it doesn't have the best looking design. I feel like the design is right up to par with how much it um, costs, so it doesn't look like an expensive computer. Also, I would say that the keyboard's really good, right? It has like good travel, but the trackpad is not like amazingly precise. It gets the job done, but I feel like it's not the best trackpad that I've tried out. And the last con that I've um, seen with this computer is the fans get really loud when I'm not really doing much on it. So I don't know if that bothers you, but it definitely was noticeable for me. Looking at the Surface Pro, that's this laptop over here. This is one is an interesting one because it's also Microsoft's laptop, but it's kind of like their flagship of the Surface line. So it's the 12 inch screen. So it's obviously a lot bigger than the Surface Go. And in terms of specs and stuff, again, this laptop is $719 and the specs you're getting are four gigabytes of RAM, a 128 gigabyte SSD. So it is faster storage, a 2.6 gigahertz Intel Core i5 and a 12.3 inch um, pixel sense 10 point touch display. Also, you're getting a really good panel at 2736 by 1824. You're getting 267 pixels per inch. It looks pretty sharp and good. You're getting integrated uh, Intel HD graphics and you're also getting USB 3.0 type A and the same Microsoft charge port. So again, not a ton of ports on here, but uh, the specs are a little better. Um, and you're getting Windows 10 Pro. So going over the pros, the same things kind of hold true that the Surface Go had. So it's a premium build, it's a Microsoft brand. It's still pretty portable and pretty light. Uh, it has a great looking screen that gets really bright and it also works with the pen. So you can still take notes and stuff and use this as a tablet and as a laptop by attaching that keyboard cover. Other things that are nice about it is the same Evoxy experience, um, the magnetic charger, which is good if you walk over your cable, it's not gonna break your computer. And you also have the bigger screen, so that's an advantage over the Surface Go. You're gonna be able to do split screen more easily and still be able to see things. It has really good speakers, actually, uh, very surprisingly so. Some of the other laptops on here um, don't have the best speakers, but this has really good ones. It's Windows 10 Pro. If you buy a little bit of a higher spec model, you can probably do some editing and stuff on here. Not maybe on this particular model, but if you spec it up a little bit, you should be able to do some Premiere and maybe some Photoshop stuff. The cons are that you need to buy the keyboard cover separately, so that's like another added expense. And then you're probably also gonna need to buy a USB hub so you can get some more ports. That's not a necessity, but for someone uh, that uses a lot of stuff, you may need it. Um, and then also, again, it's not the most comfortable in the lap because you have the hinge and that kind of digs into your legs like a little bit. It's not terrible, but it's not the most comfortable experience on the lap. Overall though, this is a really solid option for students, especially if you're a student that likes to take handwritten notes and also type notes and have the flexibility of also using your computer as a media consumption device. This is a really great option for all of that that I just mentioned. All right, the last laptop is the Dell XPS 13, and this is the most expensive on the list. It comes in at about $1,200, the one that I have here. 
So in terms of specs, you get a 2.4 gigahertz Core i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, a 13.3 inch infinity display, more on that later, um, integrated Iris Plus graphics. So it is expensive, but those specs kind of blow the other specs out of the water. You're getting a 512 gigabyte SSD, so fast storage and a lot of it. Um, a Core i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, so you can definitely do some editing and other work on here. No problem with that. Uh, so going over the pros, we still have a very lightweight build, uh, and it's really nice and slim. It's a regular computer, so it's easy to use on the lap. You're not really going to have anything digging into you. You've got high-end specs, a lot of SSD storage, you've got a lot of ports, and really thin bezels around a really nice looking screen. Can't stop looking at the screen, the bezels are just so thin. The cons are that it's expensive and the speakers sounded a little bit tinny to me. And then the last thing that I would say um, about this that I did like is in the inside, it had a very soft interior, and the keyboard and the trackpad were really, really good. Very impressed with this overall experience. If you have the money, this is a really good option, especially if you're a content creator and you're a student. This will kind of be a laptop to get them both done. All right, so overall thoughts, I would say that I would pick up the Acer computer if you're on a budget. For 600 bucks, you're getting a lot of value. Um, if you're looking for something even a little bit less than 600, like I already mentioned, the Chromebook is probably your best option. Um, I would not recommend an iPad Pro. I tried to use it for like a month at the end of the school year, and if you want to see a video on my experience with that, let me know with a like and a comment down below. But I just couldn't see myself using it. The um, operating system is just not developed enough to be a laptop replacement, and the keyboard is not that ideal either. There's no trackpad, it's mostly touchscreen. Just overall, it was not a great experience. I, as I already said, would probably recommend the 12-inch MacBook. But again, you are paying a premium. It starts at like 1200 bucks, So it's expensive. I would say on a budget, get the Acer. If you're looking to do content creation and uh, take notes, I would get the Dell XPS 13. If you're looking for a secondary device or a great main computer just like for school, the Service Go seems like a really great option. If you want a full review on it, let me know with a comment uh, down below. And then lastly, the Surface Pro is a great option. If you're looking for a bigger computer that's a bit more powerful, and you're also looking for a computer um, that you can take notes on and take to school. All of these, though, are really great options. I want to thank B&H for sending them out so I can make this video for you guys. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe because I have a lot more content coming. Also, thank you guys. We just hit like 86,000 subscribers. That's insane. I really, really appreciate the support. I'm going to post a video on that where I just kind of talk about why that happened and a little bit more about me, so stay tuned for that. You should subscribe right here so you don't miss any other content and watch my other content right here. I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Thank you guys all for watching. Bye.